let's talk about the wild card game. Yeah. Did that torture you on the Brewers' side? Uh, yeah, we were definitely a little heartbroken. What, um, what was the clubhouse like after that game? M- miserable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, cause a lot of us knew that like other guys were gonna be moving on different teams, stuff like that. So, um, you know, we the way our September was and how we were just beating everybody, uh, even without Yelich. Um, that that meant a lot for for the boys, but yeah, and that, it was set that up, hit. And, oh, it, and, yeah. it, and it was set up for you because you bring in Hater. Hater. Yeah, and so you have to feel uber confident there. You think it is pretty much locked up, right, in the back of your mind? Yeah, a bit, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, like, he, he's You're the best human. reliever in baseball. But a- after his Zim's broken bat single, I was kind of like, oh no, I'm like right. the way this is going right, right now. <laughs> and like the the one uh, the ball that hit Taylor that they reviewed, but like it hit his handle. But like, yeah, oh yeah. no, it was hit by pitch. Like it's a foul ball. But yeah. it's like, oh, what here was the we go? Here what was the go. kid's name in the right field again? Trent Grisham. Uh, did you? <laughs> how bad did you feel for that kid? Yeah, it wasn't his fault. That ball had some weird English on it. It did. Like, it just, like, bounced and went the other way. But, yeah, but once it went past him, we were all kind of just like, oh, no. And then, like, that huge momentum shift. And that's when, like, the crowd got into it because the crowd yeah. was quiet the entire day. Yeah. And then once that happened, the crowd was just – and then the next thing, I was leading off. I remember I couldn't even hear. Like, my helmet was, like, shaking. and yeah, It was, was a quick turn of uh, events. Yes. When, when you're up in the plate like that, <laughs> in, in a moment like that, you've been playing throughout the game – do you get nervous, or for, how does that affect you? For me or for Soto? For you. Oh, for me, no. It's not being nervous. It's just like, you know, it's all about the mojo. You're trying to, like, you still have your approach, what you want to do. But, you know, then you kind of realize, like, like oh, my goodness, like, yeah. this game is not turning out very well right now. <laughs> we got one out left. Like, right. You know, you you praying for a two-run home run or something like that, but right. you know, did you watch? Did you watch any of the postseason after that game? Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, I'm a big like like whatever team I'm on. If I'm eliminated, I'm always watch at bars. I go like have a beer, some nachos, and watch all the games. Uh, it's always good to be in like that environment. Right. Yeah. Um, like I was telling Howie, like when Howie's home run. Um, like I had tried a shot and I dropped my shot because it was just like these all these Astros <laughs> fans around us like talking all this stuff, all this mess. And then that ball went off the pole, and I'm just like, <gasps> right. And I was like, no way. I was like, where oh, are you watching that? this? In what city? In Vegas. Okay, that's where, oh, that's where home nice. is. Yeah. Oh, you live in Vegas. Yeah. Ah, very nice. And I'm just like, oh my, like that was the craziest like World Series I've ever, I've ever seen. It was nuts. Besides, like that one, the Cubs and like the Red Sox when they first won, it was just like, what in the world is going on? So I was like, you know, after that, I wasn't as bitter. Yeah. So at least we lost to like the World Series champions, and they had a great run after us. So. You know, you can't be too mad. Who was your closest buddy on the Nats that you knew just from playing in the league? Uh, Are you tight with anybody? A lot of it's just like playing uh, playing against them. Like, I played against Howie for a long time. Um, it's on, like talking on the bases, that kind of stuff. Um, but, like, teammates, I uh, played with Jan Gomes with the Blue Jays. Um, okay. But, but that's pretty much it. Right. And Howie was a big part of helping bring you here, correct? Like yeah, talk about how it went down. Yeah, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. You, you talk to, to Rizzo or somebody, I, I don't know. But, um, you know, from, from what I was told that, you know, Howie's really big. Like, he's one of the leaders in the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And he's one of the guys that make sure that, you know, if, if you're not – if you're not with the team, if you're not, like, helping us uh, move forward, then, you know, you'll be out of here. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I take a lot of pride and you know, he thought I'd be a good fit for this clubhouse. And, uh, yeah, I'm just here to, to do Try my job. And, yeah, let's go. We were talking about the lineup before you came on. Um, what's your idea of – or what's your expectation of how many games you're going to play? You played 150 games last year. I mean, that, you played a full season. Yeah. But here you got Zim. You you got the righty lefty thing. And um, Kendrick, who's going to play some and first Kendrick. base. Do you? I mean, are you going to play seventy five games, eighty games, a hundred games? Do you have any idea? No, nobody knows. Yeah. And you know how crazy baseball is. Injuries can happen any time. Sure. Um, sure. Trades or stuff like that. A lot of things yeah. out of your control. So, uh, I'm preparing to play. You know, one sixty two. You know, if right. if I get called on all those games, so. Um, that's all I can control. Gotcha. What do you do? At, what does Eric Thames do during a game when you're not in the lineup? So let's say, because you, you say it's uh, Zimmerman starting, um, will you be taking cuts like in the third inning, fourth yeah. inning, fifth inning? That's one thing I learned with Milwaukee. They were big on matchups, stuff like that. So after that, after the third inning, you never know a move could be uh, made, pinch hit or defensive replacement or who knows what could happen. So 
you know, you you don't want to get in there cold or get like, whoa, I'm up right now, and then you're scrambling for your stuff, trying to get loose. So it's always good to, you know, stay loose throughout the game and always kind of prepare for pitchers who might come in, who's in, that kind of stuff. All right, Sarah, if you've got a really long beard, I'm just curious. <laughs> It looks like you actually shave, though, kind of above the mustache. Like, how do you make a decision to let the beard go really long and shave? Like, how long have you been going with that? Well, I've took about three inches off. And yeah. it's, it's, it's actually not combed out. I just woke up, yeah. <laughs> brushed my teeth, and went, went right to the field. It's too early for me for all this. How long did it take um, to grow that? My hair grows pretty fast, so I started growing it out last June, maybe. Wow. But, yeah, so, like, it grows fast. I mean, probably be down to – down, down to the nips right now. If I didn't trim <laughs> it up, but you know, right, I'm trying right. to, I'm trying to look a little clean. You know, right. like we'll see, we'll, we'll see during the year. I might just like, like form, let it eat. Shaving is a pain in the ass, but I would imagine it's hard to just. It looks like you clip above yeah, the mustache. Eyebrow razors. See, that's a little, little trick, a little, little trick of the pros oh, really? out there. Really? So, uh, and I like a lot of women use eyebrow razors. It's like a little single blade. It looks kind of yeah, like a pencil. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. And that's so, how like, you get, get in there. Yeah, you get a little pack on Amazon or whatever, and just yeah, it's like for detail, it's right. easy. Right. It's a lot easier. Since you've been here, um, it's still way early, uh, but, like, when taking cuts with the guys and everything, have you, is there anybody here where you go, like, wow, that guy's way better than I thought? Or has anybody jumped out at you? I would say uh, I would say watching Juan Soto hit. I mean, it's not that I didn't think he was good. I, right. Everybody knows he's really good. But like, yeah. actually seeing, like, like, how young he is, how hard he works, how smart he is as a hitter when he's preparing, um, it, it's kind of cool. I always like seeing how guys prepare, even, like, watching Yelich last few years um what's different they just put in more work than everybody else no no it's, it's not so much like the quantity uh it's just like you can see like they're uh they, they don't waste swings like a lot of older like veterans or like the all-stars and hall of famers you see like when they get their work and it's like every swing counts and i just like talking and oh uh, whatever right I'm just getting loose but it's like every swing has like a purpose mm -hmm. and um and yeah that always translates to the game where do you think you will bat in the lineup are you guys? Are you and Zim four guys? Are you going to be deeper in the lineup, or where do you think you will be when you're playing? Hopefully, at least one through eight. That's, that's <laughs> you the goal. So you don't have you don't have an idea. You know, no, really. Do you have knows. a preference? No, no. For me, I don't care as long as I'm in the lineup. Um, that's all that really matters. Which yeah. of the pitchers are you most happy to not face this year? Strasburg, for sure. Really? That, that changeup, man. I'm, it's so funny. Like he throws it, and you see it, and it's like, okay, it's a changeup. It's gonna be right here, and you swing, and it's like three or four inches like further away and it's like how to move that much in like a matter of like a foot um yeah so i'm not happy yeah by far so you would have you'd rather face max than strasburg and corbin that you would think a lefty lefty would be well i haven't faced corbin since like triple a so okay that's that's a lot <laughs> that's a little <laughs> distant a while. Yeah. um uh no uh, you know i've i've, I've pretty pretty bleh. sorry i need coffee <laughs> Just woke, uh i have pretty decent numbers against max so um what, what, what was your approach against Max? What would you do? What would you be thinking? Just try to sit on his fastball? or No, just uh, just see ball, hit ball. I just feel like, like some pitchers you can see better than other pitchers. And uh -huh. like, it changes for hitters, too. Like like some some guys can see like, like Strasburg really well. Yeah. I'm not one of those guys. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's why he he's the guy. Why, <laughs> why, yeah. why, why is his change so much more wicked than other guys in the league? I'm not, just, I'm not, I'm not much of a pitching guy. Just like that late movement. Late movement. I would say, like, that's – Separates a lot of like, there's a lot of good prospects out there, lightning stuff, uh, but they get hit and nobody figures it out. But it's like the late movement. That's what makes like these guys really good in the big leagues. Is, you know, yeah, you see a curveball pop up and okay, guys can hit it. But some guys, they throw it so hard and it's like it doesn't break to like the very end and that's tough to hit. Right, right. What, what, were you, you know, we were talking about how Strauss was allegedly, and they say he was, he like tipping his pitches there in the, the first inning there of the World Series and they noticed it right away. Are you one of those guys that can pick up those things? Can no, no. I mean, s some guys definitely have the eye for all that. but They say me, Jan Gomes is amazing at it. He's really good at it apparently. I, I could see. I, yeah, yeah you, you see a lot of catchers because they yeah. see it all day. They're out yeah. there looking at video, yeah. stuff like that. But. For a lot of hitters, it's like, nope, don't. I, I don't want to know. Just let me hit. Yeah. Start looking okay. And boy drops his arm. Like if it's like obvious, but you don't really see. Yeah. Then yeah, but like a lot of guys are just like, oh, okay, curveball right here. It's right. like. And how I mean, much of an advantage away. is that? Without getting into the whole thing, but how much is if you're if a guy, let's just say he's tipping pitches. Forget about stealing signs. Tipping pitches. How much of an advantage is that as a hitter if you know that information? Oh, it's really. It's massive. I, I mean, it's massive, but it has to be right. 
because like some some guys like a big situation they get tense and like their shoulder okay fastball okay and you can see them okay they're starting to build up for okay I'm gonna throw as hard as I could or it's like a breaking ball they kind of like relax or they're mm -hmm. they'll fan their glove on like a change up yeah so if like if it's that obvious which it almost never is then yeah it's like you just sell out on one pitch and then if it's not there if it's not that pitch then you don't swing but it's like right. it's all about selling out what was Pepperdine like it was fun um, for me I pretty much just worked like I, I chose that school because it was uh close to home but far from home yeah um but I, I would stay out of trouble it's not a big party school at least it was back then. i don't know how it is now um man what a piece of property though man. yeah yeah. No, yeah it's not yeah it's nice <laughs> i mean it's beautiful it's probably the only spot in the world where kids go on the dl for uh for sunburn you know right right <laughs> Maybe yeah, not. at least like two guys a year would go to the beach, fall asleep, right, wake right. up, just back. They can't <laughs> even move. It's like, yeah. Well, well, we appreciate the time, bro. Good yeah, luck this year. You, Hopefully we'll talk to you throughout the season. All right, right on. Yeah, good I'll be here. All right, thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. All right.